Hello? <sighs> I'm well lit because it's overcast outside. <laughs> I got about 20, 30 minutes-ish before work. If I could well, get ready to go to work. So, yeah. Just kind of want to spare and spend a minute and just, you know, catch you all up on what's been happening in the world. I believe there's still a war going on between Russia and uh, whatever. And, um, because apparently the pilots are on social media. Surprising enough, we don't really see too many soldiers in, you know, in live uh, warfare or active warfare, you know, doing selfies, you know, in mid-battle, you know. It's, it's like, I've been shot down. Selfie. I just want you all know, I survived. And it's like, um, wouldn't the enemy be watching social media too? Just saying. Uh, but yeah, apparently that's going on. Uh, let's see. Uh, Biden hasn't burned down the nation yet. That's good. Uh, let's see. Uh, people rather dislike immigrants coming in. Especially all the way to New York. All places. I don't know, it just seems like if you're going to bring someone in, you don't really need to bring them all the way to almost the Canadian border, just saying. Uh, let's see. I mean, if you're going to take in refugees, sure, fine, but New York, it doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't. Uh, and do people get stressed out because it's like, oh no, now it's more people I have to worry about. It's like, okay, I can understand that, but also it just comes off as really, really just mean. You know, because it's like, it's immigrants. It's what everybody in this nation is, is an immigrant. You know. Or whatever. Uh, California is still standing. Nothing's on fire. We had that big rainstorm a little while ago. Uh, temperature of the ocean on the equator is rising. A lot. So, expect to see some interesting weather phenomenon or differences in the next um, <laughs> decade. That'll be fun. People want me to live until for another 25 years. <laughs> I'm 65. I'm like, what? Uh, I want to see all the changes. Joy. Why don't you live to be 100? Why don't I? I can say back in the good old days <laughs> before everything went to shit. Uh, anyway, uh, Hollywood. We're still in the midst of that writer, writer strike, and apparently other people are striking too. And, um, yeah, Hollywood is really starting to reconsider its options. Because apparently, and if I may use Mad Max Fury Road as a bit of a reference guide, or the first indicator, you know, that guy on the road says, well, you don't want to go down that way. No one returns from going down that way, you know. Uh, back in 2016, 17, you know, uh, during the uh, woke movement, apparently the consensus is if you want to get your movie made and you don't have enough money for it, come to, I forget who it's called, but go to somebody who's woke. Get them to financially back you so that they can put agendas into your script so that thus you can make your movie made to something that vaguely re resembles how you wanted it. Hence is why Mad Max is sharing the screen with Furiosa. Because it's like, well, whose story is this? Is this Mad? Uh, is this Max's story or Furiosa's story? And it kind of comes off as more of Furiosa's story and Max is kind of more along for the ride. You know? Max is not the exciting incident. Furiosa is. Max is just there as, like, kind of more the the B-plot, if anything. Uh, so, you can see that first road sign and everything that's come else beyond, after that. You kind of see, it's like, yeah, Hollywood was really wanted to, had to follow the function, which is what Rachel Hollock kept talking about, was you go broke, then go woke, and then ultimately croak. Because then no one wants to see your movie because, well, it has all these checkboxed 
you know, uh, uh, agendas, and no one wants that. No one wants that, you know. And it was even a funny thing I saw where uh, people were pitching, were doing a mock you uh, uh, board meeting about the creative board meeting in the writer's room about how to, you know, modernize and bring back and remake in live action form, you know, the Disney, you know, catalog, you know. Uh, and how do we change that up? Oh, we make the, the dad, we make him gay or something like that. And it's like, you know, honestly, it just sounds like what the writer's room at Disneyland <laughs> Sounds like, because a lot of the same things that they say is outlandish is the same things that they have actually done. Ugh, or it's like, oh, come on, guys, really? We're doing this? I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, it's modernization. We'll be fine. It's like, nope. And then your, your bloated billion-dollar movie plus, plus the advertisement. Repeat that. Billion dollar movie and a billion dollar in advertisements worldwide. Bombed at the box office and you only made, I don't know, like a couple hundred million or something like that worldwide. Yeah, that's going to cover the billion dollar, you know, thing. It's like, well, damn, we, we spent three years in, in modernization. I, I don't know where we went wrong. And it's like the whole concept. No one wanted it. No one was expecting a live action version of it. Nobody asked for it. But you thought you gave it to us anyway. And just like, well, there that is. And I was like, yeah, there there that is. I don't know what you want us to do with it. The, you know, the consumer. It's like, it's like, what, what am I supposed to put that in my collection? Why would I want this in my collection? Why would I want that? What, 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 what possible benefit can I get from that? And I am a Disney fan. I have a whole row of Disney's past successes and minor failures. The damn thing is, is when they fail... It was only like a couple of projects. You know? Disney was still considered the gold standard. Even with a few... You know... Uh, 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 failures under its belt in the late 70s and early 80s. That's why you have a disconnect between... Oh, what was it? Um, the Rescuers Down Under... And... Uh, and The Great Mouse Detective and Oliver and Company. Because you have those like seven... Seven years. Because we had like... Robin Hood and, and Jungle Book and all that stuff in the 60s and 70s, then the late 70s and then on into the early to mid 80s, you know, we haven't really got anything. We had some minor successes with Great Mouse Detective and Oliver and Company, but those were not smash hits, like I said. What then, you know, became the next Disney renaissance was The Little Mermaid in 89. 89, 90, something like that. Uh, 89, because it was supposed to be Christmas of 89, so still technically 89 and so you know you had you know still the gold standards disney was still the gold standard throughout the time throughout the late 70s and into the 80s and all throughout the 80s was still considered the gold standard it wasn't pumping out you know uh, movie hits but it was still the gold standard and hollywood is now realizing that you know we thought if we cater to everybody everybody would love it but no, because your writing sucks, your writing sucks, your writing sucks, and your writing sucks. So, you know, and you had some good successes, like in Canto, as once you reflect on it, a bit rushed and hastily edited and chopped down for movie length, which was still a damn good series, a sorry, darn good movie, um, which I doubt will ever get a sequel, because all the writers are gone. Hollywood did not it was riding high I mean you got the Marvel people were putting out decent films and then slowly and surely people got a bit high on themselves I believe I said this before at some point someone gets high on themselves that they cannot they cannot fail right um what was I going to say? The Big Short. I was just watching it the other day, and it's like, it is so pivotal. It's so, like, meaningful even now, because people are so certain on that, uh, you know, continuous uh, success. What has happened, you know, before we succeeded before, we're succeeding now, we'll succeed in the future. You know, and Marvel has, like, 
20 movies under its belt. It's a billion dollar industry. And then it all goes to shit when they just got high on themselves and said, no matter what we do, we're still going to make money. And that would be true for a brief while, but once you keep making bad decisions after 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 bad decisions and guess what another bad decision people are like okay i don't care anymore if another marvel movie is is produced i'm not just gonna ignore it i don't care i don't care anymore i don't want to deal with you and that's basically what marvel did they ran their you know, golden yacht sailing through the sky right into the ground because they thought everything they touch, everything they touch turns to gold. And it's like, no, you turned it to shit because you thought every decision you made was the correct one because it's worked before. Gee, how did I screw up now? Maybe because you're funny, people are not funny. Or maybe you're really funny in small doses. Jojo Rabbit is done by Tiger Waititi. Jojo Rabbit is fantastic. It's beautiful. It works. But putting him in charge of a Marvel film? Eh, no. Just no. Just no. It's just jokes need to be in a time and place. You know. Having... Jokey jokeness there all the time, you know. A scene has to be serious and then funny, you know. Make get them laughing, get them crying again, you know. But they're trying to do that too fast, like they're just too, you know, stapled together. Every line is like, I'm a serious line, but I'm a joke line. I'm a serious line. No, I'm not following it as a joke line. It's like, no, no, it should be. The scene should open seriously and then end, you know, it should have, the joke should be in a time and place. Everything should be spaced out properly. And Marvel, for whatever reason, then, it's like they're trying to cram more comedy in there. Because like, comedy works, and we'll add more comedy. It's like, no, less comedy, or about the same. It's okay. You don't have to have more comedy. But then they did. And it's like, it looks like you're trying too hard to make everyone laugh. You know, it's just not funny. Or, let's do this as a running gag instead of more of a one-off or maybe two. Nope. In there all the time. And it's not funny. It's annoying. Uh, and Hollywood as a whole has forgotten what it means. This is an art. And a company second. But now it's, well, it's corporate. It's corporate first. Make the damn money. And we feel like it be artful, you know, quality, you know, writing, production, you know, that stuff. They get, I was more concerned about being the bean counters than they are about being artists, putting out a good story. And so, you know, like I said, the beginnings with Mad Max Fury Road and everything up until now, it's just showing Hollywood saying, well, I need a bigger budget. I need to be that CG, you know, you know, uh, uh, spectacle. I need to be, I need to be the blockbuster. Everyone keeps saying, I need to be the blockbuster. I need to be the big boy campus, the big splash, you know? And it's like, but I need more money. Hey, woke people, can you lend me a couple of bill? Yeah, sure. Now, if you see, we got to have some rewrites here in the script. See, we got to, see, make this guy a gal and, and, and make this person gay and, uh, oh, this, uh, day for night scene here, and, uh, oh, oh, yeah, and, uh, we, we gotta put in, you know, a, a gay flag in the background, yeah, yeah, yeah just do that, then see, that makes it a better film for that wider audience, what wider audience, there is no wider audience, there's just the audience, it, what people don't get is that you cannot get everybody to be the fan of the film you know, right now, as soon as it breaks, oh, it's the biggest thing ever. No, not every film is The Little Mermaid or Die Hard or Iron Man, you know, this mega blockbuster or, or, or Lion King. Lion King was huge because it, it uh, had enough seriousness and kidness to it that it appealed to both adults 
and kids. You got the whole family going instead of just one parent and like the kids, you know? So yeah, it struck that proper balance. What people don't realize in Hollywood is that sometimes your movie takes a while to get going. The entire history of Hollywood has had that issue where, you know, even with Ed Wood, that man didn't see uh, near as much a success in his lifetime, if ever. You know, you don't become a success until like way later when it's discovered on home video or, or re-released in theaters after 10 years or whatever, you know. When a new audience, a new generation picks it up and starts to like it, you know. You know, if a movie bombs at the box office, apparently in the eight, in the eighties or late eighties, it was picked up at the home video market at the nineties. Then it becomes a big hit. Now it has, you know, Big Lebowski was not a big hit, I don't recall, or a moderate success in theaters. Then it had a huge following on home video. Lots of movies done that throughout all of Hollywood history. You know, things take time to find its way to an audience. You know, it, it takes its time. And that's what happens. But that's what Hollywood doesn't want to wait for the audience to gather over time. It wants its audience now. Hence, it needs the big budgeted scripts now. And so it needs the money now. So we'll go to that low corporation or whatever for the money and compromise its script, which probably would have been pretty awesome left by itself, and then have it monkeyed with to make it more for everybody. And then the movie is, you know, bloated budget, craptacular failure at the box office. You know, and it's like, mm, that's where we are right now. As best as I can understand it, that's just the situation we find ourselves in right now. And the, generally the audience does not care about Hollywood too much. They're not going to go out in droves after COVID and you know, and, and make the effort to slug their way you know, to slug it on down to the to the nearest theater for something that people making the movie can easily just put on streaming, you know. And right now it's the time for the independence. The not necessarily the Hasbro Hotel, but um, Hell of a Boss, uh, Murder Drones, and a couple others. You know, the independent people. This is a dilly of a time for them. They can, they can, you know, put this out with good quality and not have to deal with the rivalry of the Hollywood blockbuster because that's kind of in the toilet right now. So, if they can do, you know, an independent film put out in theaters, you know, it's a moderate success, put it out on streaming on their on whatever platform they can, you know, that works pretty well or weller too. So yeah. It's just you cannot it's that old comedian's joke entertainers, you know joke or, or, or outlook is that you cannot get everybody in the room to laugh at every joke every time. That's just not possible. If you do, great. But you can't rely on that. You can't expect that every time, you know. You cannot appease everyone. And Hollywood, for some reason, thought they could just do that. They can appease to everyone, write these scripts for everyone, be modern and woke and with it, instead of just being themselves Every time someone has tried to be there for everybody, you know, it doesn't work. It has never worked. I have two bosses. I'm trying to work with them. It doesn't always work. There's always some overlap somewhere, somehow, you know, and I try as best as I can to make them work, you know. That's a very difficult, that's why I don't like Fridays a hell of a lot, because there's overlap. You know, I got to make sure one job ends in time to start the other. It doesn't always work. You know, something comes in. Greg, we have one more for you. You know, and it's like, but I, it, it's Friday. I know, but can you? You know, and it doesn't always work. And if I know, if I'm one guy 
who believes that, who's seen it in practice in his life, Hollywood should not have to learn that lesson the hard way right now. It's a group of people who are older than me. It's an establishment older than me. And yet they're just like now realizing, huh, you mean we can't, you know, cater to everybody at the exact same moment and get the entire audience on our side like that? Really? Yeah, you can't. Okay, gotta wrap this up. I kind of need to go now. Um... Uh, so, yeah, um, so Hollywood is just now realizing that, and the last thing to not tank is pretty much Universal or Paramount or whatever. Uh, the other one's still with Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers is, like, tank is tanking, but it's not gone entirely yet. Uh, Disney, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen to Disney. I really don't. Uh, if they're ever going to rebound from this, they're going to have to rehaul their entire system to get it back to what it was 10 years ago. You know, not cater to everybody simultaneously and wait for the audience to gather. You know. So. And I'm just saying, being woke and modern has its time and place. It's just not everywhere. You can't put it in every story and say, well, it's modern and woke and blah, blah, blah in every story. Therefore, it will work. It's like, no, not every story needs one. Not every story does. And that's okay. You know, a story is its story of itself. You know, you can't add on everything else and say, there, now it's better. Like, no, no, that's, that's not how it worked. It's never how it worked. You know? And so, so Hollywood is learning its lessons, and I hope, I really do, that it will change its mind and stop with all the damn woke politics and just tell us a story. You know, like they did back in the beginning when we all would crowd around a fire, you know, back when we were hunter-gatherers. You know, and people would tell stories of whatever, you know. Of forced creatures and epic heroes. They would slay the beasts that would terrorize the village, you know. It doesn't need to add, you know, anything else to it, you know. It's just a story. So, yeah, I guess that's about it. So, take care all, and, uh... See you at the movies.